Ivor falling free live at the old theater in Torshavn. There's a lot to unpack with her singing. Um, we listened to her doing a a folk, uh, sort of a primal folk, sort of singing with some like very very cool extended technique. This is very different from that. Can you guys help me pronounce her her name? Iver, Iver, Iver. You know, like Iver, Iver. Either. I mean, what I would do if I were pronouncing it that in German would be like, I would make an E eh, and then I would do U. Eh. I would round the lips by saying E. Eh. Either. Either. Like that? Either. Or is it Either? Either. All right. I'll, thank you. Thank you for clarifying. A little schwa umlaut. We should start talking more about IPA here. Unite our languages together. Anyway, um, one thing I love about her singing right here, everything is perfectly placed up in the mask, and it's all very high light, very subrette soprano sound, which I prefer in this kind of. Well, I, I don't say I prefer it. It's it's just really nice for this kind of setting, with this ethereal musical background track. This it's it we've they've created this universe of sound that's very light and moving ever so slowly etheric dream state type feeling and notice how much teeth she uses let's try to find a nice still like one of those right there a lot of teeth where's my favorite right there a lot of teeth everything stays right up in the mass there's no belt or anything the floor is floor fan this is Iver falling free just wait for it I used to sing when I first when I was learning how to sing classically. I used to place everything really far forward in my nose. It would just be very far nasally. She's doing that, but she's also letting it be relaxed here. There's the difference. 
if you're singing, if you're hearing something sound expressively nasal and, and kind of brassily forward, a lot of musical theater, contemporary musical theater does this. It means that there's too much raised larynx here. But if you can do that with a relaxed larynx, then you get this beautiful shimmery forward sound that she's doing. Earl Wilkins from Voice Play does that. I'm interested to hear more voice play. We listen to one voice play song here, but. It's a really nice tone. Now it's maintaining the head voice quality by keeping the arytenoid cartilage in the back opened up. And that's why we get that chesty, breathy, chesty sound. You know, in the lower range, if something's breathy and not tight, uh, that means you're maintaining head voice in your lower notes, which is what allows her to then also go up seamlessly into head voice and staying resonant up there. Well, you can keep the chest voice nice and breathy. Breathy, breathy, breathy. Go up seamlessly as high as you want. Changes very little. Changes very, very little as you, if you maintain that, you know, same type of phonation throughout your range. Not really shifting registers. So it does help when you're doing this kind of music to keep things uh, light and high in the mask. There's a there's a voice teacher, a very famous voice teacher, who says that no matter what you're singing, you should feel your voice in your mask. Now that that goes typically for um, classical vocals, but this technique is not far off from traditional classical vocals. Um, yeah. And it should be noted, and I completely forgot, that she is a classically trained singer. She was trained operatically, actually. The way she's using her voice is just really intelligent in that same vein, in that she's maintaining mask space uh, for the sound throughout her entire range. But she's not overly tensing and not going for too much sound. She's not going to project her sound. She's going for, uh, she's going for vocal color. Whoops. Like, literally try to do what she's doing, and it's not going to work until you just go. Me. Ah, me. 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 Forces you to just relax that jaw, relax your larynx. You can't make a sound unless this is all relaxed, right? Yes, we call it the sword swallower pose. I love that, and I'm stealing that term with her. The sword swallower pose. Just that jaw has to get completely numb. And if you try to do it like this, you get a little pressurized here, right? It's so much easier. It's kind of cheating almost, because it's just... Uh, 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 uh. Ah, it's good. It puts your voice in a good place. Don't don't play. Don't worry too much about doing this. Singers who are starting to learn how to sing and they tuck their head forward like this, it's oftentimes uh, just a reaction to trying to hear yourself too much. So trust that by opening, you're not going to hear as much of yourself when you do this. 
and let things drop, but trust that it's going to make your sound a lot easier. Am I a professional sword swallower? I hope so. <laughs> That's okay with her. Still stealing it. Now, we talk a lot about the ooh vowel and when people do it differently. Normally when someone like Floor does it, who's making that transition up to really high notes sometimes, we get more of an ooh. I mean, in this context, in this melody. Ooh, ooh. <clears throat> ooh, ooh. What we're hearing here is more ooh, keeping it forward. Now that is not as conducive for a rich depth resonant sound. It's not what she's going for. She has this gorgeous forward sound with this relaxed breathy timbre behind it, which is cool. I think, I mean, the ooh vowel, the U, ooh, whatever, there are so many different ways of approaching it. And it's just interesting because it allows for singers to do different things. She starts off that last phrase very breathy. I want to just make a call out to that last section. Very indicative of, uh, it, it's clear, like the inspiration behind when we heard her do that more like folky sounding uh, performance out in the mountains, that that was very inspirational for kind of the texture she was doing here. It's chicken or egg, because I don't know what came first, but the sort of this, just, this un un restrained vocalism of just these sounds that she's creating it's meditative it's entrancing it's really really cool and the way she's starting these last phrases all starting with the breath starting easy it's it's a it allows her to keep that forward placement without getting compressed or tight uh, it allows her to just keep doing it without losing vocal stamina that's why we sing well right so we can keep singing um there's no singing well in a perfect sound there's singing well to continue to sing how you want to sing that's what singing well is. It's all about stamina. She approached the voice really well to do that. Bye, Grumpy. It's good to see you.
So that last note was where her classical training came in. That's where she just shot up, relaxed the larynx, kept that very tight, narrow phonation, and let the soft palate do all the work and utilize resonance instead of vocal thrust, uh, breath thrust, right? I just want to hear it one more time so we can transport to that spot. Hear the transition. Notice the different ooh that she uses. Up until now, she's doing a lot of ooh. But what does she do right before going up to this? What kind of ooh does she use to go up to that high note? Ah, this is why I, this is why I love being a huge vocal nerd. It's moments like this. That was the ooh, not ooh, ooh, boom. That's why we do this, man. This is what I live for. <laughs> you guys, um... Ah, huge fan of Iber. Uh, guys, but you guys in chat, you're freaking disgusting. <laughs> if anyone watches this, if this goes to YouTube and anyone watches this, they'll have to realize that whatever's happening in chat is completely unrelated to <laughs> to whatever I'm saying, whatever crap is coming out of my mouth. And, and then, and I, I'm curious how many people are going to go back, mute the, mute the video, and just read chat going down, because that's, that's its own thing in the back. <laughs> Uh, I am not responsible for you cretins. That's all I'm going to say. 